Good morning, students. I'm Chaitanya, Assistant Professor in Mathematics, Institute of Aeronautical Engineering, located at Dundigal, Hyderabad. Today, my topic of discussion is Maximum Likelihood Estimate, uh, which is a part of a third module, and of course, it is a part of fourth module also. Now, uh, let us start our discussion on Maximum Likelihood Estimate. Before going to the before understanding what is uh, maximum likelihood estimate, let us start our discussions uh, uh, with on, on uh, probability basics, which are which very fundamental to understand maximum likelihood estimate. The concept of likelihood is closely related to more common concept of probability. That means he is he is intending to distinguish between what is probability and the likelihood. Okay. Actually, both sound similar. Uh, now, he is telling that both are almost similar, but it's little, there is little difference. The concept of likelihood is very closely related to the concept of probability. Uh, for example, an unbiased coin, the probability of observing heads is 0 0.5 for every toss. Okay. This is taken to mean that if coin is not tossed a large number of times, then we would expect on average to find half of the time the coin landed heads and half of the coin landed tails. So, the likelihood and probability both are the same. Okay, like just probability is nothing but the chance of likelihood of an event that is happening of here. So, probability is nothing but a measure of likelihood. So, that's what he, here he is telling that when you toss a coin, the probability of getting head is half and tail is half. That means when you go on tossing coin, keep on tossing coin, uh, of course, for 1000 times, then most almost 500 times in and around heads and 500 in and around tails. Like, like this 495 heads. 505 things, but they are almost equal. That's what it is saying. Okay. Uh, now, there are next thing we have to know is parameters and distributions. We have to okay. When we speak about the probability of observing events such as outcome of a toss of a coin, we are implicitly assuming some kind of that means whatever the uh, statistical experiment we conduct or random experiment we conduct. Uh, definitely we will use a probability distribution like a binomial or poison or negative binomial or normal. So that is what he is telling whatever the experiment we are associated with, whatever the random experiment we are associated with, we will definitely use a probability distribution which is called a model. Okay. In the case of a coin, the model would state that there is some certain fixed probability for the prob probability of head probability of tail. So, generally this is Bernoulli distribution we use, Bernoulli. Okay, that means the model we are using is Bernoulli. If we go for so many tosses, then there comes binomial. Okay, if we indefinitely toss, then it, it comes poison. So, depending on the experiment and the number of trials, you will choose the suitable distribution to model the experiment. That's what it is saying simply. Okay, and you say that the coin is fail if a probability of getting head is as same as the probability of getting tail. That is, that is there. They have equal probability. Then we will see that the coin is unbiased. If it is not so, that is p is not equal to five, then the coin is called biased. That means there is a there is a small fraud or we call it, uh, uh, decisiveness in the coin. Okay. Next concept to understand, which is very important in understanding maximum likelihood estimation is conditional probability. The conditional probability of happening of A given B is already happened. That means there are two events A comma B in a random experiment. Let me ask you a question. What is a random experiment and what is a non-random experiment? See, random experiment is nothing but any experiment whose result cannot be predicted in advance. With hundred percent assurance. Non-random experiment means an experiment whose result can be predicted in advance. Okay, with hundred percent certainty. 
that means when you toss a coin you cannot predict whether it is a, it, it will be a head or tail or roll a die you cannot say that this number is going to happen for sure those are all random experiments okay now under a random experiment suppose we have two events a and b now we are defining a new probability probability of a given b that means probability of happening of a given that already b is happened or probability of probability of happening of a obeying the condition b obeying the condition b okay that is called condition that is why the name conditional probability that means you have to obey the condition b and obeying that condition b you have to find out the probability of winning of a or happening of a okay assuming that b is already happened or obeying the condition of b the chance that a will succeed or a will happen that is called the that is the meaning of probability that a given b probability that a occurrence of a assuming that b is already happened okay the definition is p of a intersection b over p of b the conditional probability p of a given b is defined as common probability p of a intersection b divided by probability of b so this is called conditional probability here you can see p of x given a y means p of x intersection y by p of y okay now the probability of an outcome will be conditional upon the parameter values of this model in the case of the coin of toss probability of h given probability of getting head is 0.5 here it means that probability of getting a head given that there is equal chance of getting head okay the condition is equal that is coin is unbiased and the probability of it this is a trivial thing i'd like to tell one uh, non trivial example suppose uh, there are two uh, places vacant in a in our cricket team in our iari cricket team uh, two opening places are vacant and uh, three players are competing namely a b c namely a b c so all the three are very competent for opening batsman position they have competent equal competences so initially the probabilities of getting selected into the final two positions of opening is 1 by 3 1 by 3 because equally likely equal chances 1 by 3 1 by 3 1 suppose a new condition is imposed that condition is denoted by d that left handed batsman is included left handed left handed means b is already left handed a c are not left handed so b will be automatically selected for this position so the chances of a given that left handed already one position is fixed for left handed that is called condition new condition is for left handed left handed then you could be selected so the chances will be automatically changed Okay, his chances will be reduced because B is already left-handed. His chances will be raised. A is we don't know whether he is left-handed, so his chances may be we can play with. So that's what the condition of left-handed opening batsman automatically changes your probability of getting it. So this is what you could understand from condition. Now, uh, here we are saying the definition of binomial distribution. that is p of x probability of winning x trial is out of n trials is n c x small p power x q power n minus x you know q is 1 minus p and n c r is nothing but n factorial by n minus x factorial into x factorial p power x q power q means 1 minus p whole power n minus x that is what written here here n denotes the total number of tosses and uh, and uh, you know p uh, uh, the x denotes the number of times you want to win or the heads you want to get and p denotes the probability of obtaining 
ahead. And Q denotes the probability of obtaining a tail. So in that way, you could understand. Okay. Now, what is the concept of likelihood? Now, so far we have discussed the concept of probability and uh, some things related to probability like uh, um, what you call events, conditional probability, etc. Et now, we are entering the concept of likelihood. In the case of data analysis, we have already observed all the data. Once they have been observed, they are fixed. Suppose we have a data and we have to analyze the data. So the data set is huge. Of course, we have to analyze. And we have observed everything in the data. That means it is fixed. Once we observe, it means it is fixed. There is no probabilistic part to them anymore. Because if you have verified everything, you are very certain about the data. Okay. The thing is when the data is very huge, you cannot you cannot penetrate it each and every part and you cannot see. That means it is then then there exists there is there arises the probabilistic rather means randomness, probabilistic conditions. So when the data is less and you could see each and every data point observed, that means there is certainty, there is no chance of probability. But if the data is very huge you cannot penetrate to each and every corner, then the you the necessity of probabilistic modeling arises. Okay. We are much more interested uh, in the likelihood of the model parameters that underlie the fixed data. So when we when you want to analyze the huge data by using a probability distribution, every probability distribution will be associated with parameters. Suppose binomial will be associated with the parameters n comma p comma q. And Poisson will be associated with the parameter lambda, and the normal distribution is associated with the parameters mu comma sigma. Thing is, uh, so whenever you model the data to analyze the data, when you are modeling the data set with the probability distribution, you will try to estimate the, the parameters of that probability distribution. Suppose you are to estimate mu and sigma. Then only you can predict the values, missing data values. Then you can, if you know, if you estimate mu and sigma to the maximum possible extent, then you can use those mu and sigma to predict the values of f of x, missing features. Okay, that's what. So, we are much more interested in the likelihood of the model parameters that underlay the fixed data. Okay, likelihood. Likelihood means what would be the mu value, the best possible mu value. Okay, so that we could estimate the features or the x values correctly to the maximum x. That is what. See, knowing parameters greater than the prediction of outcome, that is probability, observation of data greater than estimation of parameters, that is likelihood. So, here he is clearly telling you what is the difference between probability and likelihood. Probability always takes care about happening of an outcome, happening of an outcome or event A. Okay, likelihood is a, the other case that is it takes care about estimation of estimation E of X, you know, estimation of uh, the parameter that is X or you call X, X estimation of mu, you can say or estimation of variance. So, See the difference between the probability and likelihood. Probability always deals about the probability of happening of events, the joint event, that means A union B, A injection B, A bar, A, and probability this with this. Whereas likelihood is the concept of estimating the parameters like mean, estimating the population mean, estimating the population variance, estimating the population median. So this is the difference between the probability and likelihood. Here, we are seeing a simple example of maximum likelihood estimate. So, as a training, as a simple, uh, uh, before going to the deeper details, uh, we are we are trying to understand the maximum likelihood estimation with small examples first here. Say, we have tossed a coin 100 times and observed 56 heads and 44 takes. How many times we have tossed? 100 times. How many heads occurred? 56. How many tails occurred? 44. So, uh, we want to find, what is the parameter, suppose when, when you know that there are two e, two outcomes, namely head and tail, two means by 
outcomes means nominals. So binomial means binomial distribution, right? So we can we can write B. We want to maximize the parameter P because binomial distribution always depends on n comma P, most precisely P. So we want to find the maximum possible value of P. That is what maximum likelihood estimation of P. That is what he has written here. Okay, so out of 100 times tosses, 56 heads occurred, 44 tails occurred. Now we want to find the maximum likelihood estimate of P, that is maximum possible value for P, where P means the uh, uh, rate of happening head. Okay, then we want to ask whether or not this value differs significantly from 0 0.5. That means under MLE, if you find P for this uh, for this uh, random trials, 100 trials with 56 heads and 44. Whether the ma MLE of P, maximum likelihood estimate of P, will be equal to 0 0.5 or not? That is the question before us. That is the question ahead of us. Okay. In front of us. So, how to do this? How to find the value of P that makes the observed data most likely? So, how to find most likely uh, value of P? Okay. So, as mentioned, the observed data is now fixed. They will be constant or plugged in out uh, into our binomial, binomial probability. That's what I told you. Here, binomial distribution is the only because two possible outcomes, success and failure, P, Q, heads and tails. That is why binomial we are going to use. Okay. Now, here, N is equal to 100 to to tosses of coin. And P denotes the probability of getting head or P is related to head and Q is related to tail. Okay, now we want to maximize the P. See now, uh, basically we assume the probability of getting head is 50-50 chance between head and tail. So 0 0.5 comma 0 0.5. Okay, uh, now with this assumption, if we calculate the likelihood of P, that is according to the formula NCX, P power X, Q power N minus X. Okay, total number of trials are, how many trials? Uh, 100 trials, 100 tosses and 55 hats. Okay, and 0 0.5 to the power of 56, 0 0.5 to the power of 44 because 56 heads, 44 tails. This is heads, this is tails. Rate of head, P. Rate of tail, P, Q. Head, tail. Okay, 56 heads, 44 tails. When we calculate this, we are getting the answer 0 0.0389. That is, uh, the likelihood of P is, is almost 3.8 uh, percent okay now let us do this with in another way of from from our data from our data that is like this n is equal to 100 tosses among them 56 heads so we calculate the p in this way that is favorable by total 56 by 100 that is 56 by 100, no, no, how many tosses, or oh, let me check, 56 sets and 44, yes, okay, so 0 0.56 is 0 0.56 and Q is equal to 1 minus P, that is 0 0.44, here it is a mistake, 0 0.44, okay, right, now, by using the binomial formula, likelihood of P would be NCX, that is 100, C, uh, how many heads we, we could uh, uh, call it as 56 heads, 100 C, 56, okay, 0 0.56 power 56, 0 0.44 power 44, that would be almost around 0 0.058, that is 5.8 percent. So, see here, by taking the usual values of head and tail 50 50 0 0.5 0 0.5 it is it is uh, 3.8 percent whereas uh, assuming uh, taking the real uh, occurred data given sample data 
uh, and calculating P with the help of Faro by total that is 56 and Q 0.44 we are getting 5.8%. So the maximum likelihood need not be equal to general general value of P that is general uh, expectation of P that is 0 0.4. Okay. That's what we, we understood from this example. So maximum likelihood need not be equal to the general mean of the distribution or general uh, mean of P, general value of P. Okay. Now, the maximum likelihood estimation method is an estimation procedure that given a probabilistic model estimates the parameter in such a way that they are most consistent with the observed data. That means, see, uh, when you are trying to estimate the mu, because you are uh, you are modeling a data set, a data set with normal distribution level is zero, and its parameter is mu. Okay, so you want to obtain the maximum, yeah. most likely estimate of mu. Okay, uh, so the maximum likelihood estimation method is an estimation procedure that given probabilistic model estimates its parameters in such a way that most consists. That means the MLE of E of mu is nothing but the method or procedure such that the mu will be more consistent. What do you mean by a more consistent estimator? Let me explain first. See, you call an estimator x bar that is sample mean is an unbiased estimator of mu when when uh, e of x bar is equal to mu that is expectation of x bar is equal to mu then you call x bar is unbiased estimator okay and uh, when there are two estimators like theta 1 theta 2 of mu which are unbiased that means they may be more more than one unbiased estimator of population mean, okay, theta 1, theta 2, and both are both are unbiased. That is, E of theta 1 is equal, E of theta 1 is equal to mu, E of theta 2 is equal to mu. Both are unbiased. Then we will take the criteria, that is the next level criteria to check which one is more more efficient. That is called efficient estimator. For that, we calculate standard deviation of theta 1, sigma theta 1 and standard deviation of theta 2. If sigma theta 1 is less than theta 2, then we declare theta 1 is the more efficient estimator. Of course, both are unbiased, but even then, standard deviation of theta 1 is less than standard deviation of theta 2, then we call theta 1 is the more efficient estimator than theta 2. Suppose, Theta 1 is unbiased, theta 2 is unbiased estimator of mu, that is E of theta 1 is equal to mu, E of theta 2 is equal to mu. And both are equally efficient, that is sigma theta 1 is equal to sigma theta 2. Then how to judge which is better? How to judge which is better? Then, uh, then the criteria of consistency comes into the picture. Then the uh, role of consistent estimator comes in the picture. When both are unbiased, theta 1 and theta 2, both are unbiased estimators of theta and both are efficient estimators of efficient estimators of theta, then we look, we look at whether uh, as n tends to infinity, that means as the sample size as you are increasing, okay, the theta 1 n is equals to theta or theta 2 n is equals to theta. That means you, you are going on increasing the samples. That is first we have taken this sample. Now the, you have increased the sample size, you have increased the sample size. When you are going on increasing the sample size, which reaches theta very fast? That is called consistent estimate. Suppose limit theta 2 n is not equal to theta and limit theta 1 is equal to theta. Then theta 1 is called theta 1 is called consistent estimate. That means as you as uh, big as the sample size, as uh, accurate as the estimation. That is what consistent estimate. 
Now, so this is now the thing is now the thing is it is very difficult in practice to find uh, whether the given estimator theta cap is a consistent estimator of theta. It, by using the definition, it is very tough to tell whether theta cap is a consistent estimator of theta. Then you will use the concept of MLE, maximum likelihood, to tell whether theta cap is consistent estimator of theta. Okay. Now, see here, uh, you are observing a diagram of normal curve. Uh, with uh, six observations, so data points are six, namely y1, y2, y3, and so on, y6. And uh, you have plotted y1, y3, y4, y5, y6. Of course, y2 is this is y2. I have missed right. So this is the curve. You located the values, the corresponding points on the normal curve, where the normal curve parameters are mu and sigma square. Okay. Now. The thing is, uh, you know, the PD, the probability density function of normal curve is f of uh, x comma mu comma sigma is equal to 1 by sigma into root 2 pi e power minus 1 by 2 x minus mu by sigma whole square. So, by using that, if you assume y of i is the variable here, because y of one, y1, one, y2, y3, so if you assume yi as a variable, then the density function would be like this by using this 1 by sigma root 2 pi e power minus 1 by 2 x minus mu that means y i minus mu by sigma whole square. Here your intention is to find the maximum likelihood estimate of mu that is what you are really inter interested and intended to do. Okay. Now, uh, Maximum likelihood is of instead of maximi maximizing the likelihood function theta given y, we we maximize its natural logarithm. That means, uh, it, it, uh, suppose we will construct a function over the theta which is to be maximized, okay, given the variable y. But generally, it is very tough to uh, find the maximum value of theta from this uh, likelihood function. So then we will apply the natural logarithm ln of log of L of theta comma y that is here written as ln of capital L of theta given y and we then by using which we will try to find the maximum possible value of theta that is called maximum likelihood estimation or log likelihood estimation also. Using the logarithm of is efficient from an implementation point of view because, because you know logarithm has beautiful properties log uh, log of product will be split as some that is log mn is equal to log m plus log m and the log of the division makes it into a subtraction log m minus log m okay and logarithm log m power n becomes n log m that means the power it could makes it simplifies the power as a product of the numbers so these are the advantages of logarithm that is why when we apply log on to the maximum likelihood function then automatically the mathematical process becomes simpler. The mathematics will be very simple. Okay. Now we will uh, in the in the practical purpose in the machine learning algorithm for finding ma maximum likelihood estimate of a parameter theta, where theta is the parameter of a probability distribution which is modeled the data set and to analyze the data set and to find out the missing features. Then we apply a repetitive process until we reach the maximum possible value of theta. Okay, we'll apply the algorithm or finding of theta repeatedly that is called iterative methods so that at a stage we will reach the saturated point of theta and we take it as a maximum possible estimation of theta. Okay, that is what mentioned here. Now, here you have you can see some good properties of maximum likelihood estimator. Uh, asymptotically correct means when you that means consistency you can say it is very consistent as you increase the sample size and it is it is unbiased and consistent that's what so maximum likelihood estimate is always uh, 
almost unbiased or maybe little bias not much bias that's what you are saying okay even though some estimators may be biased but they can be they could be consistent that's what it is saying so maggie likelihood estimator always guarantees the consistency and also efficiency there are three things unbiasedness efficiency and consistency so maximum likelihood may may not be guaranteed whether it is unbiased or biased but it guarantees efficiency and consistency that is why maximum likelihood estimation is the best process in estimating the value of parameter okay that's what consistent the larger the n the more accurate the estimate that is as long as the sample size increase as we guess the sample size you increase the act as accurate as the estimation of the theta that's what it means okay now is it is symptotically efficient that means it guarantees efficiency i told you when sigma theta 1 is like sigma less than sigma theta 2 equal theta 1 as the efficient estimate so maximum likelihood guarantees you the efficiency so what is the first property asymptotically correct means it it is it gives you uh um consistency it guarantees consistency our second property it guarantees efficiency third property uh the maximum likelihood estimate almost always follows the normal distribution so the mathematical process would be very easy so these are the three good properties number one asymptotically consistent asymptotically efficient and asymptotically normal that means the distribution of theta cap the estimate will be always will be a reverse bell shaped okay that's what it says now the maximum likelihood estimation of the mean of gaussian distribution okay uh, uh suppose here what is gaussian distribution so nothing but a normal distribution with mean mu and fixed variance uh, okay here he, he is taking one see you can, you can see you can see here okay and we want to estimate the mean mu variance assuming that variance is known that is sigma is fixed sigma is fixed as one well. we want to find the maximum likelihood estimate of mu that is what our mission in this in this heading you could see okay as a starting we are assuming only two point data two two points of data that is x1 x2 that is why we have mu and uh, sigma is fixed as 1 okay and uh, val values of y that is the data values are 4 and 6 okay the shape of the pdf single random variable is uh, we could assume the shape of the normal distribution always would be like this normal distribution would be always like this because we are assuming that the pdf is normal distribution okay now we have taken the normal distribution now we are going to generalize example there are so many data points y1 y2 y so on so many data points are there y and so on now we are assuming that sigma is known but mu is not known we have to find the maximum possible value for mu that is maximum likelihood estimate of mu okay and we know that these points are following normal that means when we plot y1 y2 so on yn on x axis the the progression would be like a normal curve okay that is what we are assuming they are following normal distribution okay now we are taking the normal uh, density function here normal probability density function 1 by sigma root 2 pi e power minus 1 by 2 x minus mu here yi minus mu by sigma whole square okay now here uh why here because we assumed that sigma is known and sigma is 1 automatically here sigma square becomes 1 and here also sigma becomes 1 and hence we got this that means 1 by root 2 pi into sigma e power minus 1 by 2 yi minus mu by sigma whole square this is our density function but we already fixed that sigma is known and we have taken sigma as 1 so here we put 1 here we put 1 so automatically it becomes like this that's what here we intend to write okay that is what the meaning of this step now 
uh, we are finding we are trying to find a probability that y of 1 is equal to 4 given mu not known but sigma is known as 1 okay then here in the place of y of 1 you could write 4 then the function then the thing will be 1 by root 2 pi e power minus 1 by 2 4 minus mu whole squared okay now in the similarly if you write y of 2 is equal because we have taken two de two point data set y1 y2 which are 4 comma 6 which are 4 comma 6 then it becomes uh, the f of the probability of happening of y of 2 is equal to 6 given that mu is not known but sigma is known is is like this 1 by root 2 pi e power minus 1 by 2 6 minus mu okay now uh, the thing is what is the probability of happening both y of 1 and y of 2 both y of 1 and y of 2 here we are considering both simultaneous occurrence of y of 1 and y of 2 that is why we are multiplying because you know that in multiplicate law of independent events a, p of a in section we will be p of a into p of b probability of happening of both y of 1 and y of 2 simultaneously means p of a in section b which will be p of a into p of b by using multiplicate law so we have read, we got this and what is common here here you can see 1 by root 2 pi is common k e power minus 1 by 2 4 minus mu whole square into 1 by root 2 pi e power minus 1 by 2 6 minus mu by 6 minus mu whole square here what you could see 1 by root 2 pi 1 by root 2 pi multiplied 1 by root 2 pi whole square okay basis are equal that is e power power when basis are equal in product powers are to be added that is minus 1 by 2 4 minus mu whole square plus 6 minus mu whole square this is what we obtain okay now now what we are doing here we got a law of y right we apply log on both sides log on both sides we are applying log on both sides then what is happening when we apply log on both sides log 1 by root 2 pi whole square square and root cancels okay log mn you know log m plus log n so log plus log of you know a power log e power this means it becomes minus 1 by 2 4 minus mu whole square plus 6 minus mu whole square into log e base c okay but you know log e base c is 1 so we have a constant log 1 by 2 pi and minus 1 by 2 into 4 minus mu whole square plus 6 minus mu whole square into log e base c means 1 so what you get you get this thing you get this thing see here we applied log on both sides and uh, you know that uh, log m plus log n, log n plus log n. Of course, both the ways are correct, the discussed way, and here you are observing log n plus log n. Again, log m plus log n, log m plus log n, because log m n, this is log m n, log m n, log n plus log n. Here, log 1 by root 2 pi plus log 1 by root 2 pi. So, you would write 2 log 1 by root 2 pi. Here, log and exponential cancelled, log and exponential cancelled. So, you got this minus 1 by 2, 4 minus mu whole square, minus 1 by 2, 6 minus mu whole square. That's what you got. Okay. Now, now after getting this, differentiate with respect to mu on both sides differentiate with respect to mu on both sides okay what we are going to do we are going to differentiate with respect to mu that is do ln of l by do mu is equal to log of a constant derivative derivative of a constant zero 
Here, the derivative will be by using change, uh, change rule 4 minus mu into minus 1, minus 1 by 2 into 6 minus mu, uh, sorry, 2 into 6 minus mu into minus 1, 2 to cancels, 2 to cancels. So, answer will be 4 minus mu plus 6 minus mu, the answer will be 10 minus 2 mu. Okay, 10 minus 2. Now, by equating it to, to 0, 10 minus 2 mu is equal to 0, that is mu is equal to 5. So, the maximum possible value under uh, for this uh, dead two point data set where y1 is equal to, sorry, where y1 is equal to uh, 4, y2 is equal to 6, where the data is following normal distribution is maximum possible value for mu is 5. That's what we expect. So, this is the process of maximum likelihood estimation. So, here in this example, we have seen how to estimate the maximum uh, likelihood value of the parameter mu of a normal distribution, which is modeled, which is applied to model a given data set. Okay. So, in this way, we will first uh, write the L, that is likelihood function of mu. Then we apply the natural logarithm ln on both sides. After applying noise logarithm, we will use log m and log m plus log n like that, log m power n, all those things. Then we will differentiate it with respect to mu. After getting derivative, we will equate it to 0 and finally we will get the maximum likelihood estimate. Okay. This is the process we generally use to. Okay. Now, uh, so, here you could see Bernoulli distribution. And uh, here also you could, in the same way as I discussed about normal distribution, you could calculate the uh, same way you could calculate the estimation of parameter of theta for, for binomial distribution, just as I discussed with you. Okay. With this, I'd like to conclude my lecture on maximum likelihood estimate. And in the next class, we will meet with one more interesting topic. And thanks for your patience listening. Thank you all. Like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.